All right, here what we have is a United States Navy carrier strike group with two carriers. I have three of these carriers, but they wouldn't all fit on my table, especially if I added the escorts. But two I can do. One is the USS Ronald Reagan, and one is a Ford class carrier, the USS Enterprise. The first Ford class carrier is complete and commissioned, so I feel okay about putting them together. And I have escorts. What we have are two Ticonderoga cruisers, one in front there and one in the back, and three Burke class Aegis destroyers. We've got two of the Freedom class littoral ships, littoral combat ships. They are actually frigates. And we have two nuclear powered attack submarines, one of Virginia class and one a Seawolf class. No other country in the world has carriers these powerful. So each is capable of carrying up to 90 planes. In this case, I've got full strike forces ready to take off on each deck. And uh, each of these carriers uh, has a lit um, hangar deck. So as you can see, inside of each carrier, they have their aircraft preparing. Now this is a very powerful task force. Each of the cruisers has 128 vertical launch missiles. Each of the destroyers has 96. The vertical launch system on US ships is capable of carrying four packed ESSM, which are evolved sea sparrow missiles, in one vertical launch cell. So they will carry up to eight of those cells with four medium range evolved sea sparrow missiles. That'd be 32 each times five ships. The carriers also carry evolved Sea Sparrow missiles for defense. And then each, uh, each of those vertical launch cells, including 12 cells on each uh, of these particular subs, uh, can carry Tomahawk cruise missiles, either sub-launched cruise missiles, SLCM, or the uh, ones that are launched from the destroyers. But mostly what the destroyers carry are standard missiles, which have a range of anywhere from uh, 10 to out to over 100, well over 100 miles, uh, particularly for the ballistic missile defense, which can go up into subspace. So these carriers are very well protected. And the United States has 11 carriers, and uh, they are all that powerful. And every one of them has this type of a defense force surrounding them. Now, I'm showing them very close to each other, but they would actually be one or two ships near the carrier within a few miles, and then the rest would be spread out at quite a distance along the threat axis. As you can see, each of the, destroy each of the aircraft carriers has a large uh, wing of aircraft on its deck. The USS Ronald Reagan has a whole bunch of F-18 E and F fighters, Super Hornets, and F-35C aircraft. My Ford class Enterprise is got an air wing that's based on the late 2020s or early 2030s with uh, 
sixth generation fighters and the F-35Cs, which she will be carrying at that time. And as you can see, each of the and each of the hangers, they are very well apportioned. So I wanted to just show uh, a U.S. carrier task force in one 350th scale. It's a very awesome sight to see. I wish I could have all three carriers because I have the USS Enterprise, which was recently decommissioned, but is the same size pretty much as the Nimitz class carriers, which the Ronald Reagan is. But like I say, you can see how large they are, and a third one would simply not fit with a couple of more escorts that would be added. So this is the pretty much ultimate example of a carrier strike group. And I wanted to show it in one 350th scale with the Burke class destroyers, the small smaller frigates who would do mostly anti-submarine work, and the Ticonderoga uh, class cruisers, which are Aegis cruisers, and who would command and be in charge of the defense of the carrier task force. So I hope you enjoyed it. You can look on my YouTube cha channel and find separate full-length videos about each of those carriers. And with that, I'll close. Once again, United States Navy Carrier Strike Group featuring two aircraft carriers and their large air wings. The most powerful naval forces on Earth today. Thanks a lot.